film reviews on the Sunday Breakfast Show, do we? However, um, Glenn asked me if I'd seen a film, which, weirdly, I'd seen the trailer to and thought, I need to see this film oh, brilliant. with. Because um, tra- even the trailer's brilliant. And your film review for this particular film was so delightful and lovely. I thought, let's let's just, forget Mark Walsh, let's get Glenn on. So firstly, Glenn, as if they would say on film night, what is the name of the film? The film is called Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Oh, it's a lovely title and it's a fabulous cast. Now, remind me who's in it. No, you're asking. I don't know. I think it's Leslie Manville, isn't but, but it? There was a woman have... who was called Mrs. Harris in the film. But Mrs. Harris in the film, the actress, she's one of those actresses that's been in everything. Hang on, Mrs. Uh, hang Harris. On. Wasn't I meant to be doing the film review? Oh, I'm so sorry. You you're, on. you're googling it the is. film. It's Leslie Manville. I just wanted to. Add... Oh, Jason Isaacs is in it too. Oh, I love Jason Isaacs. Anyway, Leslie Manville. So, cracking film. Crack on. Uh, first of all. I've got to say, I went to St. Neots to watch it. And oh, I, lovely. I, I love a trip to St. Neots because there's a pizza shop next to the cinema. Yeah. So you can go to the cinema, then go to the pizza shop for tea. So I treated myself. What what topping? I didn't have a pizza. I had a can of loney. <laughs> you know when you know when you go yeah. to a posh pizza shop and they do the cans of loney? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had yeah. a can of loney. Lovely. Anyway, th- this film, Mrs. Harris went to Paris... I love films where nothing particularly happens. <laughs> and this film was brilliant because Mrs. Paris, you'll never guess what she did. She never went to Scarborough. She went to Paris. No. And then she came back again. I feel like if you were in charge of production and getting the funding for this film, it might not have got made. If your pitch is, I love films that nothing happens and nothing happens in this film, it probably wouldn't have got made. But it did. It, it, it was more exciting than my usual type of film. She went to Paris. But in the trailer, I thought she became a fashion designer. I don't remember that bit. <laughs> she went to Paris and <laughs> came back again. Did you stay for the whole film? I think she bought a dress at some point. Yeah, because she wanted to say she wanted something a bit glamorous, didn't she? She did. Yeah. So she yeah she bought a really glamorous dress, but then went home again. Went home again. <laughs> she went to Paris, bought a dress, came back again. It's a brilliant film. It's my favourite film I've watched all year. I need to go and see this film so I can counter your review next week. That's brilliant. But if your review is not matching up with the trailer, Glenn, I'm not going to lie. Can we get Mark Walsh on the phone to give us a third view? We need someone who's seen it. Has anybody seen Mrs. Paris has gone to Mrs. Harris has gone to Paris. It's brilliant. It's a great film. She goes to Paris, she comes back. Um, So when you say you don't like films where much happens, I'm guessing you're not a big fan of, like, Star Wars. I hate Star Wars. No. No. So, perfect film, then. They go to space in... I know, with that little bucket, that little pedal bin. Um, Right. Perfect film is music and lyrics with (gasps) Hugh Grant. I love that film! Hugh Grant writes a song, the end. Yeah, writes a song, but then... then, um, I nearly said Audrey Bottisham, because her name's on my screen. It's not Audrey Bottisham, it's Drew Barrymore. Then he meets Drew Barrymore, she's watering his plants. She gets involved as a poet. Lovely film. Um, I saw the new Jennifer Lopez one called Marry Me. Oh, I went to see that as well. I thought it's a great film because it's JLo. I love her. Uh, Owen Wilson, is, was it Owen? Yeah, Owen Wilson, weirdest person I've ever interviewed in my entire career. That's his. That's my claim to fame with Owen Wilson. But Hang on. What's, what's that a name just dropping? Somewhere? It was a massive name that just dropped. However, it, it's a great story, but the it's a good job. It's a good film because the premise is so wobbly. You sort of think I've just got to go with it. Yeah, a bit too much happens. Oh, is it? Oh, it's too big a film for you. That yeah. one. You're too much. Happens I really that film. enjoyed it, yeah. but I thought. Yeah, maybe maybe if it stopped when they got married. Yeah. Because the film's well, called Marry Me, so we just need to get married. Yeah. The end. This film would have been about eight minutes long, though. Glad well, that's good. You want a happy ending. Can I suggest don't watch Top Gun Maverick? Because there's way too much going on. I wouldn't on in that watch that. It's got the word gun in it. Oh, true. It's more about aeroplanes than guns, to be fair. I don't like aeroplanes either. <laughs> I'm so glad you're not a movie producer. Has anybody, please help me, help me. Has anybody seen Mrs. Paris Goes to ha- I've done it again. Mrs. Mrs. Harris, Harris Goes, goes to, to Paris. Paris. It's oh, brilliant. It's- <laughs> she goes to Paris, she comes back again. I feel like there's more to it. 08, 000, 85, 95, 96. Is this a new slot? And Mia's got Film Friday. I've got Mad Film Sunday, 08,085-9596. I won't be taking texts and WhatsApp because I don't know how we can do that about a film. Uh, so give us a buzz, 08,085-9596. don't think the film show is going to be giving us a ring to take over, are they, Glenn? 
If you're just joining us, Glenn went to see a film uh, this weekend in St Neots called Mrs Harris Went to Paris. And I've seen the trailer and, ca and uh, Glenn's seen the film and I don't think the trailer matches the film that he's told me about. Luckily, we've got an adjudicator, Cathy in Dogsthorpe. <laughs> Morning, Cathy. How are you, my love? I'm fine. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all Apart right, I think. you're hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry and I couldn't, I didn't get to sleep till one o'clock, Cathy, and oh, then I was, I was up at four, so I'm a bit, I'm all right. Glenn's kept me going in coffee this morning and I get to chat to you and everyone, so it's oh, nice. Well. That's a consolation prize, I think. <laughs> exactly. Now, tell me, have you been to see Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris? No, I haven't seen it, but I've seen the trailer. Right, I it, have too. It starts off, she's talking to this this person, this man, and he says that you're, enti you're entitled to some war pension. Oh. And then the next thing, she's talking to her friend and she's got this fancy dress in her hand. So I think she got uh, a lot of back pay or something, and uh, that's why she went to Paris. OK, Glenn, is this ringing true to you? It says it rings... Did you sleep through the film, Glenn? So the way I understand I it, Cathy... must Kath go to sleep through it. <laughs> he must have done it. It doesn't make sense, does it, Cathy? Because we've seen no, the trailer. No. And I remember that bit, that she was. She found out she was entitled to some money. And she's a cleaner, isn't she? She's yeah, a cleaner. It, yeah. And I think she'd been looking after some posh people's houses. And one of the ladies had a dress delivered. And she's like, oh, my goodness, she spent more on this dress than three houses put together or something like that yeah. but she's enamored by it is it like coco chanel is it chanel it's chanel i think or, like that. It's got a posh name. or Givenchy, or like a design paris designer house that sort yeah. of thing and then when she realizes she's got some money she goes you know what life's too short i'm off to paris to buy this dress because yeah. it's it before the days where the fashions from paris would end up in I mean, house of fraser one, isn't it it's sort of in the 1940s or something like that I think, yeah i think it's post-war i think yeah um, my time. <laughs> yeah yeah, and then she and then she went off to Paris, and then she finds herself at a fashion show, or she finds herself buying the dress, yeah, and she that's uh, it. and then the the, uh, the or Mr Armani or Mr Givenchy or whoever it is is there and meets her, and I think it sounds like she's very impressive, and he gives her a job. But you see, that's what I took from the trailer. Kathy and Mrs Harris yeah, goes that's to what Paris. I took, and I thought, oh, it don't seem very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, I beg to differ. I saw that trailer and thought I need to go immediately. So I'm not. Sh y well, it sounds I don't like like things about the 1940s and about war and things like that. You know. So I sort of. Uh... Oh, I thought it was about a dress going to Paris. Well, you see, now I'm I so... Mean, you just get a little glimpse and I'll say, oh, yeah. Cathy, you've confused me more, love. I'd <laughs> seen the trailer, Glenn saw the film, that didn't match up. I've seen the trailer and you've seen the trailer and that doesn't match up at all either. So I don't know if I'm now just confused with what trailer I've seen. Shall we both go there together? Let's let's do it. Let's have a date, Cathy. You and me, we'll go and see Mrs. Paris goes to Harris. No, I've done it again. Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. Now, listen. Because Glenn did it. He said Mr. Mrs. Paris w went to Paris. Exactly. I'm going to blame it on Glenn. Thank you yeah. very much, Cathy. That's what producers are for. And I now genuinely think I'm having a fever dream. <laughs> if you're just joining us, Glenn went to see a film called Mrs. P Harris goes to Paris. I was excited because I'd seen the trailer for Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris and thought it looked wonderful. Glenn gave it a lovely review. He said films where nothing much happens are wonderful. So I said, come on, Glenn, let's share your review of Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. And he shared his review and it was nothing like the trailer. So I was confused. And then Cathy came on. She said she'd seen the trailer, but it didn't seem like the trailer that I'd seen. And now Trish has been on. Yeah, Glenn, this, this, is, this all makes perfect sense. Glenn. Is this a moment? It like... was a great film. She went to Paris and she came back again. Glenn, you know, I was telling you earlier that I'd fallen asleep yeah. and saw a message from my friend John, but forgot I was asleep, so thought I'd dreamt it, and then it turned out it was real. Is this the opposite? Am I now asleep? Because nothing's making sense. I actually feel like I am in a, a foggy dream. Well, you remember we were looking for coincidences, coinky dinkies. Yeah. Trish has just come up with a great one. But I thought she was talking about Mrs. Harris went to Paris. She is. So, Shall I read out Trish's message and see if anyone else can... In Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, yeah. we establish that she buys a dress and comes back again. Yeah. Trish was on a train. You know Trish was on holiday recently yeah. in Norfolk. She was, when she went to Felbridge on the train, Trish tells us there was a woman there in a French coat. Yeah, there was. Sort of a French 
fancy French coat. I think she said it was an Astrazat. What, what's a Vauxhall Astravan? <laughs> Astrakhan. Astrakhan. Hang on. How did Trish know that this woman's coat was French? Did she go and say, oh, bonjour? Uh, she said to this woman, oh, I love your coat. Is that, oh. an, is that a Vauxhall Astravan? Right. And she said, yeah, it, what, what, was, what was it called again? <laughs> Astrakhan. Is, is that Astrakhan? Is that a real coat? Hang on. And she said, that. yes, it, it is Astrakhan. And she said, it's it's French. And she showed But she says it's a coincidence or a coinkydinky that we were talking about Mrs. Harris going to Paris and buying a dress when she had gone and met the woman who was wearing a French coat. I am so confused. An Astrakhan isn't even a coat. It's a place. Oh, no, wait, it's a coat. If you spell it the correct way, it's a coat. Oh, fancy coat as well. Very. She says Cathy would know what an astrakhan would be. Cathy's off to church. She is. We don't want to bother Cathy again, do we? So basically, are we still no further forward that nobody has seen, apart from you, Mrs. Harris has gone to Paris. Me and Cathy have seen the advert and we don't agree on the plot. You don't agree on the plot. And Trish saw someone in a French coat on a train. Yeah. It makes perfect sense, Louise. I am definitely asleep. There's no way this day... I don't day... know why you're confused. <laughs> There's no way this day is real. If you can help me, please do. I think I'm losing my mind. Oh, 9596. If you have seen... And why am I even saying if you've seen? Why? You don't even need to have seen it. Why not? No one else has. If you want to talk about Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris and make sure it relates in no way to the film, that would be great. 08,000, 85, 95, 96. I'm off for a sit down. If I'm sounding a bit funny, it's because what I think they say in showbiz, I've just corpsed. Absolutely. <laughs> completely <laughs> honest. <laughs> Glad you're going to have to come in. Wait, so basically, Sid Salmon's been on. And he says, Louise, how do you do film reviews? You, <laughs> you can't reach the counter. What what counter do I need to be able to, to, to see? To pay for your ticket. This isn't, this isn't Sid for Salmon. <laughs> this is Sid's wife. Oh, hang on a minute. Mrs. Salmon's getting Salmon. on it. Yeah. Oh, that's just cruel. She says you're going to have to take an adult to pay for your tickets and buy <laughs> the ice creams. Well, if they're going to pay for the ticket price, I'll be well up for that. Um... This is uh, this has been the weirdest thirty minutes of my life. Kathy's on my side, though. Kathy's on your side yeah. about about Mrs. Harris has gone to Paris. Uh, well, no, she wasn't on my side with Mrs. But but she agrees with me that an Astra van is a car. <laughs> I thought we were talking about coats. What's going on? What was the coat that Trish talked about? So I think we've established that Trish's coat was an Astra can can. But an Astra van is definitely, is a, definitely car, a car, not a coat that you might bump into on a train. Thordita's coming up next. I, I, we I, need to ask just... her to make up what she thinks happens <laughs> if Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. Can Thordita start early? I'm not going to get through the next 16 minutes. <laughs> Are we talking about films, coats or cars? I don't know what's happening. All of the above. I am convinced now that Trish, Kathy and you... <laughs> I've just got together. <laughs> That's because me, Trish and Kathy are best mates. <laughs> and you've just combined together last night. You were all at home watching Strictly, messaging each other going, how can we make Louise really confused tomorrow? <laughs> we'll start talking about a film and then we'll bring in Astrovans and then we'll throw in a coat that nobody's left of on top. <laughs> Oh, you! Like your phones are ringing. It's oh, complaints. Okay, it's Glenn, so stop laughing. It's complaints. Right, we need to get. We need Thordis to start a show early. Where is she? Thordis, where are you? Oh no, she's not there. She can't hear me. That means I've got to keep going for sixteen more minutes. And we've got some brilliant music to squeeze in, though. Starship, CeeLo Green. I also want to make sure that if you have seen Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, can one person who's seen it please get in touch? I need to put this to bed before I lose my mind. Uh, Jim in Willingham is with us. Jim, good morning. Good morning, Louise. Happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday. Now, I don't, I've not heard from my dad this morning, but I'm pretty confident that if he's with us, he'll be sending yes. his love, Jim. <laughs> Bless him. I love to him too. Bless Thank him. you. Now, please, for the love of all things good, tell me you have seen Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris before I burst into tears. I have. Oh, thank uh, goodness. I'll, I'll clear the whole thing up for you now. Oh, right, is. great. The whole conversation... It's not about coats, not about <laughs> astrovans or anything Stop else. It. Right? It's, it's, it's actually, it's a very similar sounding word 
to coat. It's COVID. And the Astroban thing is actually the AstraZeneca jab. So it's all about Mrs. Harris catches COVID and has the AstraZeneca jab in Paris. Jim, I am going to just... I totally believe that you've seen the film. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Have you not been at the house for a week? (laughs) Oh, bless you, Jim! You are you are on the naughty step. Glenn, did you know he was winding me up? Glenn knew. Glenn's in on it. Glenn knew. Yeah. (laughs) Your homework is to now get yourself to the cinema and watch this film, and I want a proper review from you on Friday. All right, I'll do it. I'll go this week then. Promise. (laughs) Uh, You are you are so on the naughty step. I thought I was going to get this sorted. Mrs. Jim has just told me I've got to do the ironing all morning for that. Oh, yeah, tell Mrs. Jim I am well with it. You can do mine as well whilst you're at it. Oh, crikey. I've, honestly, I think I've given myself a stitch, Jim. Oh, bless you. Sid, Sid. Have a lie down. Sid, I will, in about ten minutes. Sid got in touch earlier and he said, oh, never mind the Sunday service, we should have a comedy hour. And I was oh, like, yeah, <laughs> if only we could find some. <laughs> Right. Well, you've made me smile this morning, I must say. Thank you very much to you oh, as a team. You, you're more than welcome. I've got more questions than answers, Jim, but I'm glad you're happy. You have a lovely day. Enjoy the ironing. Thordis, I can't believe I fell for that. I, I delayed you. I delayed you for that n- naughty nonsense. <laughs> I haven't seen it either, by the way. Brilliant. I was Any... hoping it might be about the plant Paris Quadrifolia, which is a woodland plant, <laughs> um, but it, sadly I don't think it is. <laughs> Why not just make it up? Because nobody else seems to know what this film's about. Did you say you were hungry, by the way? I've got some star... blueberries. Yeah, but I'm not hungry for blueberries, Thoddis. I'm hungry for, like, cake or a bacon <laughs> sandwich. Don't be bringing me six blueberries. <laughs> These thing is, uh, people won't know this, but it's actually very hard to find radio-friendly foods because most oh, things, so you eat them and they're just stuck in your mouth. It doesn't work. Blueberries, remarkably radio-friendly. So my first, again, tangents, my, the first presenter that I ever worked with when I was on work experience in radio, I can't say his name because he was well-famous. <laughs> So my job at 20 to 11 was to go next door to the butty shop and get his fried egg sandwich. Yeah. Wow. But the problem was, well, it's not, thought he's no. the worst job in the world. No, I mean, like, wow, being able to, let's just be honest, none of us are starry enough that we'd be sending someone to go oh, and get us a butty oh, no. while we I mean, were still I, on air. If I said that to Glenn, could you imagine, it'd be like, go and get it yourself. <laughs> It would. Anyway, so I went and got my egg. I thought you meant it was a pretty prestigious job, not <laughs> no. that, okay, because it wasn't. So I went and got this fried egg sandwich, brought it back, and the rule was, the first thing they said was, do not take it into him until the news headlines, because if you take it in, in the travel, he'll just eat it whilst he's talking on air. <laughs> and it was like pain of death. That was like the number one rule of working on that show. It wasn't be polite to call us or don't forget to put, make sure the newsreader's there. It was don't give him his egg sandwich at 8.59. <laughs> um, I've gone off on so many tangents. I'm sorry. How are you? Gardening? I'm, I'm very good. It's been an excellent week. Uh, it's sunny. It's one of those bright, glittery mornings. Yeah. It's a beautiful autumnal day. And we are here for four hours of gardening in the great outdoors. Uh, we are going to be hearing how the new town at Alconbury Weald near Huntingdon, it's not only providing homes for people, etc., but a Amazing stuff going on for wildlife. They're putting swift bricks in the walls. They've Ooh. got wildlife corridors and hedgehog highways and all kinds of great stuff. So we're hearing about that and an event that's coming up next weekend. We're catching up with the Langdyke Countryside Trust. They're looking for your help to create a community nature reserve near Peterborough. Nature in Focus is all about ladybirds, which you might find turning up in your homes around about this time of year. Yeah. So we're going to look into that. Do we and need to feed them? Because I've got a lot on my plate with, to- no. with tadpoles and rabbits. But you might need to, <laughs> you might need to move them. They'd actually, you might think they're happy in your homes, not necessarily. Also, certain types, because there are loads of species mm. of ladybirds, certain types turn up in your home, so that's all revealed uh, later on. Our sage advice is all about planting tulips, but multi-headed varieties. So tulips that have oh. multiple flowers from one bulb. How awesome is that? Should we be planting tulips now? Because I want to know what my planting yeah, schedule is. like November, October, November, December is a good time. You don't want to plant them too early because then they might rot. So mm. I think <laughs> that was a great question to react. Sorry. 
sorry. <laughs> See, good, this is why I'm not on TV anymore. Because I, po- I kept getting in trouble for my poker face. <laughs> the great thing about um, lots of spring bulbs you have planted by now, but tulips are a good one. Like if you've forgotten, to be honest, just plant them, I think, with bulbs. Always just plant them. If you find some in a cupboard you've forgotten about, just plant them and hopefully they'll get on with it. Um, one of the really exciting things that's happening on the show today is I've been to see Barry Gayton's garden. <gasps> so Amazing. Barry, were you like, jealous? Well, yes, it's an acre, first of all, but also just more plants than I think I've ever seen in my life. I've been to some gardens, but his personal cacti and succulent glass houses, they are like professional scale. Mm. They are huge and they are <gasps> cheek by jowl. Will he look after my plants for me over the winter? <laughs> if I got, dig them up and pop them in he's his. Got room. Honestly, I have never seen a greenhouse so full. Every single bit of space is taken up and most of it is grown from seed. It is amazing. Oh, yeah. So we're taking a tour over the course of the show around his garden, the glass houses, the garden itself, um, hearing all about the kind of propagation secrets behind it all. And of course, big heart of the programme, 11 till 1, Bridget Girling and Jeff Hodge are on hand to answer your horticultural conundrums. Between them, they've got loads of expertise. So whatever your gardening question, get in touch. You can email, call, text, WhatsApp, tweet, whatever you like, and we will try to help you out. Fantastic. Thordis, I know I'm not your producer, but do you remember, I don't know why I'd remember this, it stayed in my mind. We had a, one of our little handovers a few years ago. This a is how far, years yeah, ago, it's amazing. Yeah, no, I always think of you when I think of the word hig. Did I say it oh, right? Hig. Do you remember? Hig. Hig. I don't know how to say it. Oh, Isn't it? Is worst it Norwegian ever. Well, oh, oh, <laughs> well, I seem to remember that I was going to be your agent and get you a BBC Two show oh, be all good. about being cosy in autumn. Knitting and crocheting yes, and gardening. Yes, this was the and, thing yes. we were talking about. So that's my plan to get you a TV show or about Hugo, whether it's Danish, Ice. Are you sure you're not Norwegian? I'm definitely not. I really, so it's Icelandic. I'm half Icelandic. And I'm I am. I'm the worst friend ever. Oh, well, I'm the worst half Icelandic person ever. I can't speak any. I, I own one itchy jumper. <laughs> Okay, so that's the new plan. That's could be a feature going forward. You can, if I can't get your BBC Two evening show on Hugo, then you can have a little slot for the for next few weeks up to Christmas oh, on the great sounds, outdoors. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> You're being so polite. Um, lovely to see you. Lovely to see I you. I always love our chats. You always, always look slightly terrified when no, you leave studio. It's great fun. Well, it's quite nice. You sit in the other room on your own preparing for a show, and then you get to come and actually talk to a human being. It's nice. We've tried being here since five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Well, well, don't, so, well, I think relations are strained today. <laughs> I think I'm pushing my luck in terms of um, <clears throat> politeness, let's put it this way. <laughs> anyway, Thordis, have a lovely show. Lovely I to shall see you. Lovely to see you too, thank you very much. Don't, uh, I'm not feeling too bad about you rejecting my blueberries. It's all the more for me. Fried egg, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, so Matt's been on, uh, he sent us a text. He says, Mrs Harris goes to Paris. It's about a woman called Mrs Harris who goes to Paris. Matt, you are no longer allowed to listen to this show. John said, I saw the film years ago. I've got the DVD in my hand now. She does indeed go... It only came out five minutes ago. She does indeed go to Paris and comes back. The H is dropped, so it's Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. I feel I'm very confused. Oh, it's a remake. Oh, well, if you said it's a remake, somebody might have seen the original. I am never going to go and see this film now because it's it's the, the conversation around this has confused me so much. I don't know how I will enjoy it. Um, it has been lovely to hang out with you this Sunday morning. I will see you Friday from six o'clock. Thordis is up next. Thanks for your company. I'll see you soon. We built this city.